the top of the show, John Kernan already documented the successes that Corey McLenathan is enjoying this year. The two wins, the fact that he's the points leader. But, Corey, i got to tell you, buddy, I haven't seen you this relaxed, this confident in as many years. What's been the big difference this year? Uh, just the plan. I mean, after last year, we wanted to do one big thing, that was lose weight with the car and the driver. We, we did that. And I think, you know, confidence is always built with a good team. I just think the guys behind me, this Fram team, has done a great job with that. And with that comes confidence. The more rounds you go, the more confident you're going to get as a driver. Of course, you get those race wins, like the controversial four wide a couple of weeks ago. Yes, you did win it, but Pro put out a vote. It was pretty one-sided, but you've had a couple of weeks to sit and think about that now. What are your thoughts about what happened in Charlotte two weeks ago? Well, you know what? Those are always hard. We always go in there. We were completely in a controlled environment. They did a great job on all ends of the spectrum. So I have to think that it's, it's a home run. But as a driver, the confusion of racing three other cars at one time, I think, got some people's attention. Obviously, we won, so we're happy about it. But at the same time, you know, not every decision somebody makes is always going to be a home run the first time out. So maybe some, some different ways of going about it. Maybe qualifying under four wide, and then the regular format on Sunday might be an option to go to. I mean, maybe that'll make everybody happy. Would but you do it again? I would do it again, but you know what? You put me in a race car and start it up, I'm liable to do anything. He's heading for four session of qualifying. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, Corey McLennathan is now strapped in, ready to improve on his fifth position. He goes down the track alongside Tony Schumacher. Remember at Charlotte, look in that second lane. This was the final round against uh, Doug Coletta. It was his closest match to finish second. I mean, it was 15 ten thousandths of a second at the finish line. Just a great drag race. Look how close that was. Corey McClendon getting the first four wide victory at Charlotte. And that's uh, that's a Wally that is uniquely different and is seldom matched. First time on a new track and the first time on four wide. I think I like Corey, you know, heard him talking about everything just kind of coming together. Because remember, beginning last season, they ran well, but then they brought out that in-house chassis at Indy and really started picking it up. And now they've taken some weight off over the winter and it just keeps getting better. Tony Schumacher, your defending full throttle champion, he's just kind of hanging right in there. You can never count that Army car out. out for both. Wow, Schumacher, look at that. 378, and that moves him up to number one. Yeah, like you said, you can never count that Army car out. Now number one. Yeah, and let me tell you something. Corey McClendon had a pass going for him. He was 200s quicker almost than Tony Schumacher at the eighth mile. They run about the same speed. About shortly after that, uh, Corey's engine expired before the finish line. He's only going 260 at the eighth. What could Corey have run on that run? Because that was also a great pass. But Tony Schumacher, he's the one that gets it. Wow, look at this onboard shot with Corey. Carrying that uh, front end a little bit, and then right uh, before he gets to the finish line, that end equipment. Boy, that thing was uh, all in the mail, too, just like uh, Tony Schumacher. Tony Schumacher, 10th quickest run in history, and now sits number one. But there's one more pair ready to come down. 